Thank you, Blair. Welcome to Local Agency Formation Commission, County of Kern, State of California, meeting of February 23rd, 2022. Um, we'll begin with our roll call, Madam Clerk. Present. Commissioner Morris? Here. Commissioner Here. Commissioner Sanders? Here. Commissioner Scribner? Here. Commissioner Zaragoza? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Zaragoza, would you lead us in the pledge, please? to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now I'll inform us all of the teleconference meeting requirements. Discussion and possible minute action meeting protocol a motion to hold the board meeting by teleconference pursuant to Assembly Bill 361 and Government Code 54953E and finding that there is a proclaimed state of emergency in the state and that st a state or local official have re recommended measures to promote social distancing, all is required by AB 361 and Section 54953E. Mr. Knox. Beginning January 1st, the passage of AB 361 requires a finding that a state of emergency and local official recommendation of social distancing be necessary to hold meetings by teleconference. The commission must approve this finding in order for the meeting to move forward, and we have to do this every month currently. So it's my recommendation that, that the commission approve the finding of state of emergency and local officials have recommended measures to promote social distancing as per the requirements of AB 361. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Are there comments from the public? Are there comments from the commission? Uh, call for a motion. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner Zaragoza. Do I hear a second? Second by Morris. Thank you, Commissioner Morris. Oh, all those in favor? Oh, we do a roll call, sorry. Okay. Commissioner Pro. Commissioner Morris? Aye. Aye. Yes. We can continue then. Great. We need approval of the minutes of the January 26, 21 meeting. Are there any comments or questions or corrections from the commission? Do I hear a motion? Sanders moves to approve. Sanders, thank you. Commissioner, I hear, need a second. Second by Morris. We have competing seconds. I'll take uh, Commissioner Zaragoza for the second. Mm -hmm. Could we have a roll call, please, Madam Clerk? Commissioner Fowler? Pro. Commissioner Moore? Aye. Commissioner Fowler? Aye. Yes. Commissioner Aye. Thank you. Regarding public comments, this portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Do we have any speakers uh, via Zoom or phone? Madam Clerk? No? Um, I do not see anybody. All right. We'll go on to notice public hearings. 
The first is 788 City of McFarland, City of McFarland Annexation Number 18. When I was the um, city attorney for McFarland, I, I had preliminary negotiations on this matter and uh, uh, did some uh, drafting of, of uh, agreements. So mm -hmm. I'm going to recuse myself because I feel it's a conflict of interest. All right. Thank you. So for the record, um, Mr. Schroeder will recuse. All right. City of McFarland, annexation number 18. This proposal is to annex approximately 2,138 acres of land generally located west of 99, Hanawalt Road going south to Whistler Road, Garzoli Road going east to 99 Freeway, the lands east of 99 Freeway, Sherwood Avenue going south to Whistler Road, and 99 Freeway going east to Driver Road. This annexation was initiated by the city for the purpose of future development the surrounding properties are agricultural land, including two dairies and numerous ag ponds and scattered rural residences. This proposal does not have 100% landowner consent. The applicant has been informed that notice, hearing, and protest hearing will not be waived. Our action number one is a request from McFarland Rec and Park District to continue the item. Mr. Knox. Yes. Uh, before moving on to my report and recommendation on the annexation, pr annexation proceeding, the McFarland Rec and Park District and City have not come to an agreement on park impact fees. The Rec and Park District has again requested a continuance of this item. Unlike last month, the City has requested that the annexation proceed and be moved forward. With the Chair's approval, I've asked uh, General Man Manager Jeff Nickel uh, to make a brief presentation uh, so as clear of what he is asking for in this continuance. Once that uh, uh, Mr. Nichols has made his presentation, it would be appropriate for the city to respond. Uh, commissioners, of course, are, are able to ask questions as appropriate. If the commission decides to continue this item, we will not hear the full presentation and we will again agendize this proceeding again next month. So it's my recommendation for my recommendation uh, I should say it's these types of issues are why overlapping agencies are notified before an annexation is considered. The Rec and Park District has every right to bring up this issue. I also inform them that it's up to them to sell the request for the continuation. As such, I do not have a recommendation. Uh, Mr. Nickel, could you please introduce yourself and proceed with your comments? I believe he's on Zoom. Yes, yes, sir. Um, thank you, Mr. Knox. and. Um, members of LAFCO. Um, I, I did have a, um, a phone conversation um, with um, City Manager Williams today, um, but we really, we really have not um, come to an agreement. Um, there were some things that we agreed on today, um, but not in enough time for us to have a signed agreement. And so I do have a prepared statement for you, so I don't mumble. Since LAFCO's last hearing, MRPD made many attempts to resolve the park impact fee dispute, which is, based, which is the basis for the original and current continuance. As you may recall, the city agreed to the continuance last month, but it seems that this was done more out of a desire by the city to address the recommended reduction in the size of the annexation, rather than from any genuine desire to resolve the park fee issue, given the lack of meaningful discussion regarding issues MRPD has raised. I've met with City Manager Williams on three occasions. We've had multiple phone calls, but none of those meetings were fruitful. They were all just that we're going to continue to talk. As a reminder of the issues involved, the city has collected and delivered two MR MRPD park impact fees within subdivisions for the past 13 years. MRPD uses those funds to develop and construct the neighborhood parks, which cost on average $400,000 per acre. The city informed MRPD last August that it will keep those park fees and will not allow them to be used for the neighborhood park for which they were collected. Since that post point, the city um, has not negotiated until today. Um, they did say um, that they were um, in agreement with um, providing money for the park, but they did not want any excess um, money going to MRPD. So if there were park impact fees that were collected, um, and it wasn't used for the park they wanted, 
since that point, um, um, without these fees, the parks that these two residents see um, on the track maps of development, which they are purchasing, cannot be developed. Using the Tierra del Sol track as an example, which was approved last August by the City Council, the two acre park will cost between seven hundred and eight hundred thousand dollars to design. Impact fees for the neighborhood park will be approximately seven hundred thousand. MRPD can work to secure grants to cover a shortfall, but it cannot cover the amount represented by the loss of all of the impact fees. I was asked last week, Wednesday, February 16th, to provide a proposal of what MRPD wants to begin negotiations. Our position has not changed. Even though I provided a letter to the city last Friday, um, I, I still gave it to them. I received a call today rejecting that letter because I was told MRPD would not get all impact fees. The city manager sent me a letter today after we talked but it really had nothing substantive other than that we would work together and we would agree to work together. And I do want to agree to work together. We need a signed document from our board of directors and the city council. Mr. Williams and I are not the final decision makers. We need park and taxis to construct parks for the residents of McFarland. Resolving this issue does not seem to be a priority for the city. If it were, we would have talked and met several times since the last last meeting and been in negotiations well before last Wednesday. I appreciate the contact that Mr. Williams made today, but the city's efforts still rushed and designed to appease the commission rather than reach a good faith resolution. Just was the case last month. The same thing happened. They came to us right before the meeting. This issue must be resolved before the city is allowed to annex additional lands that will become a part of the district that we already run. So it will go into that area in order for us to assure that residents of new neighborhoods are provided the parks they deserve and that they have paid for. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to speak in front of me. Thank you, Mr. Nickel. Do we have uh, City Manager Williams here? Yes, sir. Good evening, everybody. Well, thanks for seeing me. Uh, I'll try to make this brief. I know you have a big agenda tonight. So uh, I'm Kenny Williams. I'm the city manager. As you can tell by my costume, I'm here. I'm also the chief of police for the city of McFarland. So uh, yes, uh, Mr. Nichols and I have had uh, quite a few different conversation. I see a little bit different than he does, but I have to tell you that we are diligently working for a sol towards a solution. So with that, I'd like to say that um, you know, the park permit fees, and although we have not concluded with inclusion this, uh, with the park fees, the city is uh, and believes that we will continue and will come to some type of an agreement. First, um, I don't think that this is a reason for us to uh, continue this to another day. I think that the annexation can move forward, and I think that for a couple reasons. First, we recognize the importance of having continuity between the city and the parks department. And I personally believe the city and the parks department uh, will eventually reach an agreement concerning the park permit fees. Second, the only reason this issue is serviced between the city and the parks department is simply because we have readjusted our methodology to correspond with our established ordinances. This is an, an, an indicative of making the appropriate changes to assure the city is ethically and morally sound when it's making these type of choices and issues. With that being said, I don't believe the city should be precluded from moving forward with this annexation simply because we are trying to operate within the confines of our established rules. So with that, we recognize and embrace the fact that the city and the Parks Department have common interests and common goals regarding the methods in which we serve our community and I can guarantee we will continue towards those goals. So the, the city does not want to continue this matter, and we respectfully ask that we proceed with this annexation request. And I'm open for any questions that you might have. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Thanks. Let's first hear public comment, if there is any. Hello, Commissioners. My name is Beth Cuny. I'm a lawyer over at Clifford and Brown, and I'm here on behalf of the Park and Recreation District. And uh, it's encouraging to hear Chief Williams' words, and, and I think there has been some goodwill uh, between the parties, and, and again, that's encouraging. The history has been somewhat discouraging, and, and it's based on 
um, the lack of any solid agreement between the district and the city that the district is once again requesting a continuance. Back in August, for the last 13 years, the park impact fees that have been collected by the city were actually either paid directly to the district or were paid by the city to the district to develop the parks within these neighborhoods. On the eve of the uh, approval of the most recent track map in August, the city informed the district two days before that those park fees would no longer be available to the district for development of that neighborhood park. Since then, we have never had any absolute assurance that those fees would, in fact, be used for the park that is being developed in the neighborhood for which those fees are being paid. And consequently, this is why we're here. We, the district, without those fees, in the case of the most recent, totaling somewhere approximately around 700,000 as the development continues, Without access to those fees, there's a 2.38 acre, acre park within that development, which has no funds to be developed. I am certain that both sides can come together to reach an agreement, if not for each other, for the fact that there are going to be 350 residents, uh, homes there, full of, of approximately 1,500 residents who are looking to have a neighborhood park within their neighborhood as the track map shows. But without any assurance, without any signed agreement between the city and the district, the district is very anxious about where those funds will come from and whether in fact they will be available to the district for the development of the park. It is for that reason that we requested the continuance back in October we sent a letter to council for the city requesting a meet and confer to try to resolve this before you met last month, did not receive a response. So at the meeting last month, the continuance was requested and the city agreed. And there's been, again, there's been goodwill suggested, but nothing definitive. And so consequently, the district is here again Requesting a continuance or in the alternative, if the commissioners have another solution, for instance, a condition to the rec recordation of an annexation agreement, that agreement be reached between the district and the city for some kind of resolution on the park fee that both sides can agree to, that would be acceptable as well. The district doesn't want to stand in the way of development, but if the city is looking to expand residential development, that will mean parks and those, there will need to be funds for the district to be able to construct those parks. And right now that's less than clear. So thank you very much. And um, like Chief Williams, I'll be available for any questions or any follow-up. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cooney. Are there other public comments on this item? Are there commissioner comments or questions for either of our speakers? Microphone. I appreciate that. I'll repeat myself. I'm so sorry. Um, Commissioner Zaragoza has a question. Either party can answer. Uh, historically speaking, uh, if there are any kind of park improvement, I'm sorry, if there's any kind of track improvements and um, impact fees involved for a park, historically speaking, the procedure has always has always been to have that. Uh, uh, go directly, the p impact fees go directly to the park district, which is MRPD. And if so, was that automatic or was there some type of an agreement needed before the fees were actually transferred? I'm just curious how that used to work. To whom are you addressing that? E either party. <laughs> Thanks so much. I appreciate that. So, um, so historically, I don't I don't have all of the information, but I do know that there was a point where the city would collect the fees and then turn those fees over to the McFarland Parks D District. 
And so with that, what has happened, and just to give a little clarity to this, um, is the entire fees were turned over, but that's not necessarily what our ordinance says. Uh, the ordinance says is that we collect the fees and then we determine, and the primary function is for those impact fees is to go to that particular area and for that park. It doesn't say all the fees should go there, nor does it say that that money should be given necessarily to the parks district. The city's opposition is that we, we, we agree that the park needs to be built, and that's our plan to make sure that that's done. Our opposition is that we don't believe that we should turn the entire amount of fees over just to them and say, here, build the park. We should have some type, of, since it's the fees that we collect and it's not the fees they collect, we feel that we should have the ability to turn the fees over that's required to build a park, but also have those fees for other reasons, which is laid out in our ordinance. And, and so historically, yes, the fees have, have been turned over to them, but that was contrary to what our ordinance said. And once that was caught, we have rectified that because we need to oper operate within the confines of our ordinances. And that's kind of where we're at today. So like I said, I, I fully believe that we can work forward to get some solution, but I think our sticking point right now is that component of it. Because like I said, we're not in opposition to being a park. Park needs to be built in the neighborhood. Those impact feeds are collected for that reason. We're just opposed to in turning the entire amount of the quantity of funds over to the McFarland Parks District to do that, when the funds can also be used for other purposes within the city uh, for the other areas of the city as well. So that's what really what it amounts to. Do you have a response, Ms. Cooney? May I, yes. Um, so the McFarland City Ordinance specifically requires that McFarland Recreation and Park District meet with the developer to identify the park site and the park uh, size. It also further requires that the developer deed over to the district the park. So the district owns the park and is charged with the development of the park. But obviously it requires the fees to do so. For over a decade, those fees were either paid by the city to the district or in several instances, the building, the developer would pay the district directly and the district would confirm with the city that those fees had been paid prior to the issuance of a building permit. So that's been the historical practice. And the city ordinance clearly sets out that the district is supposed to be, is, is required to be involved in the discussions with the developer and in the ultimate ownership of the park. So we're left with a situation where for over a decade, the city has behaved, it, it has, has provided those funds that are necessary to, to build the park, and indeed the district has owned the park, developed the park, and maintained the park. And it was, again, just it was just in August that this change of approach was made. And despite repeated efforts to get this resolved long before tonight, we've just not been able to do so. So it, it, it's, it's on that basis that we're here, because as the city seeks to expand, it, which presumably they hope will include some residential development, that's going to have a direct impact on the parks that are within those developments. Thank you, Ms. Cooney. Do we have other commissioner comments or questions? We have another park. We have another um, public member oh, who would please. like to speak. Yes. On Zoom. Could you please identify yourself? Hi, this is Council Member Salayon Adam Farland. We hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I want to bring up some valid points as far as our ordinance. And we're just following the law that basically uh, the prior administration wasn't doing it correctly and we're, we're turning a new leaf and that's what we're trying to do is these impact fees, we're just following the ordinance. The problem we have here is the, avail the availability from the McFarland Parks and Rec uh, to be available for us to have those discussions. Uh, I'm a very transparent individual when it comes down to these issues. It's what's doing what's, what's best for the community and what's right for the community. Uh, Ms. Looney, uh, the attorney for the Parks and Rec, the availability, I'm, I'm overly ecstatic now that they're available for us to communicate over these last couple months. But rightfully so, we're in this position now. 
I just wanted to add my two cents that we're just trying to do what's right for the community um, and follow our ordinance that hasn't been followed the past 13 years. Thank you very much. Sir, would you mind spelling your last name for me? Yes, A-Y-O-N. Thank you very much. Are there other public comments? Any commissioner comments? Uh, we have a comment from, from Jeff Nickel, sorry. Mr. Nickel, would you like to proceed? Yes, I, I, I would like to respond to that. Um, we have been available. I have been contacting um, the city um, for the last several months. Um, and since the continuance last month, um, two days after that, I was requesting to have meetings. Um, those meetings did not take place. So the fact that um, the city is available and that we're not available, that is completely inaccurate. And I can say that. Thank you. I'm interested in other public comments. Please step forward, sir, and identify yourself. Uh, Larry Ronk, City McFarland, Community Development Director. In regards to collecting impact fees for parks over the last decade of some sort, the impact pack fees from the past two tracks that were developed in the city are still with the city and they are being developed for a five acre park for the residents. The park impact fees haven't been used for any other instances at this point. The impact fees for future, I believe our city manager and Jeff Nichols will come to an agreement for future parks. But based on our experience, all impact fees are we're gonna go for parks for all these residents in our city, within our city limits. Um, a five acre park is about a $2.2 .2 million project. And the last two tracks on their total fees of park impact fees were about 550,000. So there's been extra costs that the city has gone after for grants and all to develop a park for the residents in this area for a five acre park that just broke ground, not broke ground, I'm completed last October, I believe. Um, I just want to make sure that we are in the same goal. We're still presenting our park impact fees for residents, for parks. We're not using them for other facilities that are not meant for. And I believe moving forward with myself and our city manager, um, that we'll work with the Parks and Rec and come to an agreement on that. These park impact fees will be for development of parks for these residents um, that deserve these neighborhood parks for future. Thank you. Do you mind spelling your last name for us? Yes, Ronk R as in Robert, O as in Oscar, N as in Nancy, K as in Kite. Thank you. Thank you. Public uh, comments? Commissioner comments, please. We have a comment from Liz Morris. Oh, Commissioner oh. Morris, I'll have you uh, hold those comments for a moment and we have another public comment from the floor. Good evening, my name is Sally Tafoya. I'm the mayor of the city of McFarland. And I just want to um, confirm that yes, we are, um, we do want a, a partnership with the Parks and Recs. There's, um, you know, there shouldn't be any type of issue there. Um, I know our city manager and our, um, Mr. Ronk are, will be communicating with them. I, I know for, sh for sure, you know, we want that, that partnership. Um, we want the best for our community. Um, I know Mr. for the Parks and Recs, he did agree that he wants the annexation. Uh, we would love to have this annexation for our community. Uh, we are a little small community and we want, you know, our community wants to grow. And, you know, if you would give that, us the opportunity, um, that'd be great. And we will, you know, get with uh, the Parks and Recs and, and make sure that, you know, this partnership will work. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Tafoya. Do I hear commissioner questions or comments? I think you're up, Commissioner Morris. Okay, you know, I just wanted to make a comment that because I really don't feel comfortable voting on this particular issue until those matters are resolved. Um, because we could put the annexation and then what if they don't come to an agreement? You know, and then the city at this point, you know, uh, retains all those fees and stuff. And so um, until they come to some 
you know, formal agreement, you know, between them. Um, I don't feel comfortable voting on this particular issue to for annexation. And that's my comment. Thank you. Commissioner Morris, are you putting that comment in the form of um, a motion to continue this item? I don't um, want to put words yes, in your mouth. I can do but that. Yes. Do I hear a second to that motion to continue this item? Can we discuss that? Madam Chair, Sanders, this is Zach Scrivener. I'll take a second and then we'll discuss. Is Ma there a second? Madam Chair, this is Zach Scrivener. May I ask a question? Absolutely. Uh, this is a question for Mr. Knox. How How is this our issue? If they are not, if they haven't come to an agreement on the parks fees, how, how does how is that our issue when we're just considering an annexation? Um, if it is, then tell me how, but I'm having trouble at this point understanding why this inability for them to come to an agreement on park fees has anything to do with us approving this annexation. I'm, I'm happy to answer that question. Uh, we specifically notify all overlapping agencies um, when an annexation or proceeding comes before us for this specific purpose. Uh, in this case, the Rec and Park District and the city both have the ability to provide park service and recreation to their citizens. So there's an overlap here. Um, in this case, um, approving the annexation before um, the impact fee is, is resolved uh, doesn't allow for a park to be built uh, or the money to go to whichever uh, jurisdiction is going to build a park. And so that needs, to be res that needs to be resolved before we can move forward. So it is within the province of LAFCO to make a determination. We, we cannot tell them which one is supposed to, to provide the park, but we are supposed to ne help negotiate that um, it be done correctly, that, that, that services are provided. And part of our, our responsibility is to make sure that services are provided. Um, I've gone through with the city for a long time over their fire uh, contract. Yes. Um, that's been a big issue for everybody. And knowing that they have a six year contract uh, with the county actually allows us to, pro to move forward with this annexation. Whereas if they didn't know where they were gonna get their fire service, it makes it much more difficult. So in the same way here, knowing where um, or who is going to provide a park service uh, is relevant to doing an annexation. Do you have a further question, Commissioner Scrivener? No, thank you, Madam Chair. Appreciate the answer. Uh, we have a motion on the floor. It will die without a second. And we can continue our discussion. I have a, this is Commissioner Zaragoza. <laughs> I uh, second the motion from Commissioner Morris. All right, do you have comments? Yes, um, I, I concur with Commissioner Morris and I concur with our executive uh, Director, uh, Mr. Blair, my, my concern is, I guess if this was going to be something as usual, in other words, there was no change in protocol or interpretation of the ordinance, and the funds would be a mere uh, transfer like before, uh, I'm not sure we would be having this issue. The issue I see is that there's been an interpretation of the ordinance, which obviously that's their prerogative. But under the uh, Cortese Knox Hersberg Local Government Reorganization Act, LAFCO is responsible for promoting and coordinating the efficient delivery of local government services. And I don't believe that's going to happen unless the Park District and the City of McFarland come to some conclusion. And uh, since we have the, uh, the mayor here, the question I would be posing to her, when can a agreement be signed by both parties? That's my comment. Madam Mayor, would you like to respond to that question? Thank you, Mr. Zaragoza. Well, we will um, definitely, in fact, if this is your decision, we will get with the Parks and Recs as soon as possible and try to come in agreement and bring this back. Thank you. Thank you.
Are there other commissioner comments or questions? Chair Fowler, if I may. Um, during this process, I, uh, I made a, um, wasn't a request, I went to Chief Williams and, and asked whether it was possible that we could do a condition of approval that if approved, it would not be recorded until an agreement was reached between the, the city and the Rec and Park District. I made that request to Chief Williams because um, if we approve that, that would put the Rec and Park District in the driver's seat as far as uh, negotiating a deal. Um, because all they would have to do is keep saying no until a year goes by and then the, the, the annexation dies. So I, I gave that to him as, as an option, but it's not a great option because it, 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 it unbalances the, the ability to, um, to negotiate on, on behalf of the two. So I, I wanted to share that, that that was, that was part of the trying to come up with something that would work. We have a motion on the floor. I'm going to call the question and, oh, Mr. Rice. Commissioner Parlier, you're recognized. Thank you. Uh, just in a couple of minutes, actually one minute, uh, the council is going to reconvene. So I'm gonna to have to leave the, this meeting because we're dealing with redistricting of all the city wards in Bakersfield. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to leave since it affects my ward too. Can you stay for a quick vote on this item? Uh, yes. All right. I'm going to call for a vote. May we have a roll call, Madam? All right. Excuse me. Can I ask just a real quick question? If we are voting on this particular item, if we vote um, nay, that means that the annexation would not go through. Is that correct? The motion is to continue the item. Right. If we extend the item, can they come to an agreement uh, before the year is up and it would still be valid? Is that correct? Mr. Knox? Okay. So. The year uh, is, if, if it actually is approved, we have a year to record it afterwards, which means uh, when that's recorded, it officially becomes part of the city of McFarland. Our requirements today for this meeting have more to do with the notice that goes out to, to all the property owners and registered voters in overlapping districts. When we put that notice out, we have 60 to 70 days to hold a, a meeting um, on this issue. I've reached out to um, council to, to find out if we keep continuing this, what happens. As long as we keep within a notice, we may have to re-notice this item um, that has been continued further. But as long as we, we stay within that those boundaries, uh, we can keep doing this forever. Further questions from commissioners? And I'd rather not. <laughs> there additional cost incurred by the city involved for the every, delays. every time we do another notification we add that to their to the city's bill it's not right. a lot but it's all yeah. right our motion on the floor is to continue this item could we have roll call Commissioner Fowler. pro Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Yes. Six 
ayes, one no, motion passes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. This item will be continued. Next item on our agenda is 1795 County Service Area CSA 17, results of the protest hearing, and Mr. Knox. Oh, I guess I'd read first. Let's give them a moment to step out of the room. Yes, Tom can come back. And, and we're bringing back Mr. Our attorney, Schroeder. yes. Mr. Schroeder is returning to us. All right. Uh, next item is 1795 County Service Area, CSA 17. This proposal is to annex approximately 41.81 acres of land <coughs> generally located on Breckenridge Road east of Morning Drive in East Bakersfield, Orangewood area. This annexation was initiated by the county for the purpose of meeting service requirements of the subdivision as approved by the county. The surrounding properties are west, vacant commercial, north, developed residential, east, developed residential, <coughs> south, railroad. This proposal does not have 100% landowner consent. The applicant has been informed that notice, hearing, and protest hearing will not be waived. Mr. Knox, do you have a report on the hearing? Thank you. The protest hearing was noticed to all affected agencies, landowners, and registered voters. A hearing was held yesterday from 1 to 3 p.m. It was a bit lonely. We did not have any participants nor any written or verbal protests. As such, the condition of the protest hearing has been met. It's my recommendation to approve the results of the protest hearing for proceeding 1795, CSA 17, annexation number 15. Thank you. Is there public comment? Are there comments or questions from the commissioners? I call for a motion on this item. Motion to approve, Morris. Thank you, Commissioner Morris. Second, please. <coughs> Commissioner Zarazoga. Right, Commissioner Zaragoza to second. Thank you. <laughs> I'll work on that name. Thank you. Could we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Pro. Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Aye. I, are you having trouble hearing me? Yes, just a little. Yes, all just eyes, a little. All eyes motion passes. Okay. I, okay. Thank you. Next item is determination proceeding. We have none. Item 8, commission items. Policy and budget committee assignments. Uh, Mr. Knox. Yeah, at the last meeting, Com Commissioner Zaragoza, uh, asked about committee assignments. Uh, Chair Fowler and I sat down and went over committee assignments. We took to the previous list and made modifications based on an attempt to create a balance so that all categories of commissioners are on both committees. We can only have up to four on a committee. More would be a quorum uh, of the commission creating a Brown Act issue. So the policy committee will be made up of, from the county, uh, Commissioner Couch, from special districts, Commissioner Sanders, from the city, uh, Commissioner Parlier, and from the public, uh, Commissioner Zaragoza. On the budget committee, we have from the county, uh, Commissioner Scrivener, special districts, Commissioner McKibben, from the city, Commissioner Crump, and from the public, uh, Commissioner Fowler. Committee assignments are at the discretion of the chair, therefore no vote is required. <laughs> and that's the end of my, my report. Thank you for accepting your assignments, everyone. I appreciate that. Um, Mr. Knox, tell us about how we proceed with these committees. Typically what happens is there's an issue comes up before the commission and there is a um, motion or a request that an issue be, be, be referred to committee. 
is typically the way that happens. And when that happens, I will um, put out a notice that a committee meeting is being heard, go through that full process. We'll set a date, time, and location, and an agenda. And backup material is very similar to what we do for a regular commission, commission meeting. Uh, the commi committee is a recommendation. That's what, that's what they're designed to do, is make a recommendation back to the full commission. Uh, at that point, the commission can decide whether they like what the committee put together and, or not. Um, so that's, that's the basic premise of how the committees work. Um, I'm not personally all that fond of committees. Um, so I, I try to bring items directly to the commission at commission meetings. And the way I look at it is if, if I can't convince you of a specific or a group of options of what to pick, uh, then we go to committee and, and really work through the item further so that everyone is, is happy with the process. Thank you. Are there questions from the commissioners? Um, this is Commissioner Zurigo. So the question I have is, is there a, uh, um, any way to, uh, hmm. I know it's, it's hard to schedule, but if there was some kind of, you know, tentative placeholder date for a meeting for each committee so that we kind of know in advance on our calendars, but if there's no agenda, we just simply don't, don't have the meeting. And uh, my, my only concern would be is um, maybe an orientation to policy members and budget members on the committee, not in a regular AFCO meeting, but maybe in a separate budget or what I call ad hoc committee setting, just to kind of go over the history and some of the things we should be aware of. Um, that to me would be an agenda item, just to kind of reorient our, our, you know, what we do, what we're supposed to be doing and what regulations or procedures are currently in place. Or if there aren't any, maybe to, to develop some, especially when it comes to appointments and successors. I would make the assumption this is a one-year appointment or is it for the whole term? It is at the discretion of the chair. And we change chairs every year, so the next chair can <laughs> change their... It's a one-year appointment. It's a one-year appointment, <laughs> yes. sir. <laughs> See, that's something I didn't know about. That'd, that'd be kind of nice to, to kind of put that in writing, but I guess we'll just discuss it here. But, you know, so that's kind of my, my thought would be an orientation meeting and just to kind of look at the, the landscape and see if there is a, a need to meet more than once. Maybe not. Mr. Knox. Is that a referral you're making? Um, it is a observation, <laughs> and uh, I would I would think that uh, the board uh, the board members would or the committee members should have some say whether or not that's something they want to do, because I can't speak for the. There's total eight 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 committee members. I can only speak for myself. Are there comments from the other commissioners who are going to be serving on one of the two committees? You're very enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> Yourself? Mr. Knox? I, I don't know if I have any other comments. Okay. Um, if if uh, Mr. Zaragoza makes this a referral to the policy committee, then, then the policy committee could meet. Correct. Would you like to make a referral? Um, sure. I'll go ahead and make that referral since... Uh, didn't have any comment from anybody else and uh, we'll see how that goes yeah. would you schedule that for us uh, mr. Knox I will thank you very thank much you. appreciate it Does that need a vote on a referral? all right oh, okay so let's see we do not need a vote on a referral Great. Just, just to clarify all right I'm trying to find my place here um, general business approval of the monthly expense list 22-01 are there Commission comments or questions on the expense list? Do I hear a motion to approve? Motion to approve, McKibben. Thank you, Mr. McKibben. Do I have a second? Second, please. Second, Sanders. Okay, we'll give that one to Commissioner Sanders. Uh, could we, are there, is there discussion? 
Could we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Fowler? Pro. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Aye. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. Thank you. Our next um, is uh, 9B, Conflict of Interest Code Modification. Mr. Knox. Each year, commissioners, management, and council are required to complete a Statement of Economic Interest Form, commonly known as Form 700. As required by our current Conflict of Interest Code, we keep a copy and forward the originals to the Clerk of the Board of Supervisors. After discussion with Kathy Krause, Clerk of the Board, she su su suggested that we adopt a new conflict of interest code allowing LAFCO to keep the original, originals of the statement of, of uh, economic interest on file instead of with the county. In addition, the deputy executive officer will be added as a filer. It's my recommendation to review the enclosed draft conflict of interest code resolution and consider it for adoption. Do we have public comment on this item? Are there commission questions or comments? I'll entertain a vote. Do I hear a motion? If we don't vote on Sanders, this, then motion to approve. All right, Commissioner Sanders, thank you. Do we hear a second? Second. Second, McKibben. Okay. Second, Commissioner McKibben. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> May we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Fowler? Pro. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Aye. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. All ayes. Thank you. Now we have the executive officer miscellaneous items, Mr. Knox. Yes, thank you. As you know, we have been uh, in the process of uh, searching for a new clerk, administrative assistant. We have received over 195 applications for the position. Uh, it's been kind of fun to try to narrow all those down to a, a couple few. I've interviewed, interviewed about a half dozen and will soon bring back a couple for a final review. I hope to have someone to introduce to the commission at our next meeting. I can't guarantee that, but that's what my hope is. Uh, so we are getting towards the end, but it's not too late if you know somebody who would be great for the job. Uh, so leave that out there. Last meeting, I mentioned uh, that we start the process of doing the five-year sphere of influence reviews. Uh, we, we do that for both the cities and special districts. Uh, we have sent out those questionnaires that is required uh, to the cities at this point and uh, starting either tomorrow or next week, we'll start sending them out to the special districts. Uh, so okay. those will come back to you. Um, they'll say, yeah, we need to uh, modify our sphere or we don't, or the, the, the sphere you have on record is not, does not match what we have and we can go ahead and start working on through that process. So that's what that's for. Uh, again, um, we have an election coming up for the special district seat and for an alternate. Uh, the special district seat held by Commissioner Sanders will be up in May. We also have an alternate seat open. Notices for nominations have been distributed. The deadline for nominations is March 18th. We have a more than, if we have more than one candidate, then we don't then hold an election. Uh, we put out a ballot, we go through that whole process, and again, with 95, 96 special districts, whatever we have, uh, we need a quorum of that, those, which is difficult to get. So um, that's, that's one of our more difficult uh, items to do as uh, commission staff is to, is to hold those elections. Uh, we're happy to do it, though. Um, there has not been much action uh, from the state legislature on LAFCO related items. The only one I've seen introduced so far would change um, its uh, AB 1935 from uh, Assembly Member Grayson that would change the requirement uh, for a petition to file uh, an application to form a community service district. Uh, the petition, petition, the 
time it takes to count the petition goes from 30 days to 45 days. So far, that's the only uh, major legislation on LAFCO related items we've had. Uh, that's the end of my report. I do want to remind us that we come back um, on March 23rd, which happens to be the fourth Wednesday, and there are five Wednesdays in March. So it's not the last Wednesday, it's the fourth Wednesday, it's the 23rd. I get that confused. Are there any questions for Mr. Knox? Um, is it going to be a month-to-month -month determination whether we come back to this location or are we going back to the, uh, the original location? <laughs> I think we're staying here until we, something different happens, whether it's the, go the governor uh, no longer having a state of emergency or some other reason why we, we decide that we don't need to do um, a remote a remote meeting I, I, th I think we always want to do a in-person meeting if it's possible mm -hmm. but doing it this way allows right. you know someone who may not be in Kern County at the moment but have an interest here to hear and be a part of what we do so I think it actually helps uh, provide I, access I concur and uh, just to confirm is there a cost to LAFCO if we meet here or is it gratis so we getting this free of charge or? we are getting this free of charge okay. thank you um, I mean, uh, yeah yes and then the other question is if we, we, we are paying for the zoom account well that's true okay. <laughs> <laughs> big money all right so basically um, unless unless there's further notice um, we're going to meet here on the fourth Wednesday in March I mean assuming that it's available you're looking at me and I'm looking at the chair <laughs> and I'm waiting for the governor <laughs> <laughs> We're meeting here. We, we are meeting here in March. How, how's that? Are there any other questions for Mr. Knox? All right. If there are no further business to discuss, our next scheduled meeting will be the fourth Wednesday of the month, March 23rd, 2022, and we are adjourned.